Every session will be recorded and the access to the recording will be given to everybody. I will upload these recordings in the Google Drive and I can do the I will give the access to the Google Drive and the access is for lifetime, right? Anytime you can use it. And I hope everybody is able to see my screen. Here, SAP. SAP stands for Systems, Applications and Products in Data Processing. So this is the amplification. So SAP stands for Systems, Applications and Products in Data Processing. This is the amplification or this is the expanded form of SAP. So actually, this SAP is called an ERP package or ERP software. Before going to understand what is SAP, first we have to understand the concept of ERP. So ERP means Enterprise Resources Planning. So this is again the expanded form of ERP. So enterprise means any business organization is called enterprise. Then every enterprise or every business organization while doing the business, they use some resources like men, materials, machines and money. These are called four M's because every resource name is starting with the M. So these are called four M's. And these are called natural resources. These are not plentifully available for any business enterprise. Now, what is the main objective of any business enterprise? Earning maximum profits. You take any business enterprise, the main objective is to earn maximum profits. It is not just earning the profits, earning maximum profits. For that purpose, every business enterprise is having only two alternatives. One is, in order to increase the profits, we have to increase the sales. Again, to increase the sales, we have to increase the production. Again, to increase the production, we have to increase the utilization of these four resources, but these are not plentifully available for any business organization. As a result, the business organizations cannot go on increasing the profits beyond a certain point. So, it's a, there is a limitation to the organization's capacity to go on increasing the profits beyond a certain point. So the first alternative is not compatible for the organizational object. Then what is the second alternative? You take any business enterprise, whether large or small, whatever it is, it will have some amount of resources. So whatever the amount of resources they are having, they have to use them in the most effective and efficient manner. In this context, the concept of planning will come into existence. The concept of planning will come into existence. So enterprise resources planning means planning for the effective utilization of the available resources of the company to maximize the profits. Simply saying that is the concept of ERP. Again, I'm repeating enterprise resources planning means planning for the effective utilization of the available resources of the company to maximize the profits. So in simple words, the concept of ERP contains some techniques and procedures which help the business enterprise to maximize the profits by enabling them to utilize the available resources in the most effective and efficient manner. So that is the concept of ERP. Basically, the ERP is based on the integrated management of all the departments in the enterprise. So what is the integrated management? We have to provide the links among the departments in the organization in the form of software. That is called integrated management. So how that integration is achieved with the help of ERP, I'll be going on discussing now. Now, let us try to understand how the concept of ERP helps the business enterprises to maximize the profits. Before that, we should understand what are the problems faced by the companies in the non-ERP environment. For example, if you take this is an organization, in every organization, we have many departments like finance and accounts, marketing department, sales department, production planning and control department, production department, HR, purchase, like that, in every company, we have a number of departments. And every department has to work towards the achievement of organizational objective, that is maximization of the profits. During this process, every department will have their own goals and objectives. The goals and objectives of the individual departments are to be synchronized with the 
organizes an objective that is maximizes the profits. Now let us see what happens during this process. Here, if you take finance and accounts department, its main objective is to generate the maximum rate of return on the investment. Here, investment means shareholders' investment. In order to generate the maximum rate of return on investment, this finance department always tries to reduce the expenditure wherever it is possible. By reducing the expenditure, by reducing the expenditure, the finance department wants to maximize the profits. Now, if you take the marketing department, its main objective is to create the market for the organizational product so that demand is increased, sales is increased, and profits are increased. So, in order to create the market for the organizational products, this marketing department always wants to conduct some advertising activities or some sales promotion activities which involves spending of funds. Here, if you notice, both the finance department and marketing department, both the departments are trying to maximize the profits, but the way in which they are trying is different. The finance department is trying to maximize the profits by reducing the expenditure. But at the same time, the marketing department is also trying to maximize the profits, but by incurring some additional expenditure. It leads to conflict between finance department and marketing department means both the departments are pulling the organization in the opposite direction. So it leads to friction or conflict between these two departments. Let us take one more example. Here, the production planning and control department, generally they want to maintain minimum stock of the materials as far as possible. Materials means here raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, packing materials, stores and spares like that. So. This production planning department wants to maintain minimum stock of the materials to minimize the carrying cost. What is the carrying cost? Here, if you have to maintain the inventories of the materials, some working capital is locked. And obviously, we borrow the working capital from the bank. On that working capital, you have to pay interest to the bank. So interest on working capital is one aspect of the carrying cost. Then we have to pay for the warehouse rent. We have to pay for the salaries and wages of the people working in the warehouse department. So all these expenses coming together is called carrying cost. In order to minimize the carrying cost, this production planning and control department wants to maintain minimum stock of the materials as far as possible. But at the same time, the production department wants to have optimum stock of the materials so that their production function is not disturbed due to want of materials. Again, there exists the conflict between production department and planning department. Like that, in the real-time organizations, there exist number of conflicts among the departments. If, if that is the case, the organization cannot run smoothly. That's why the top management has to bring the coordination among these departments to see that organization runs smoothly. Because of this fact, the top management cannot concentrate on the performance analysis and the strategic decision making process. Always the top management has to spend its time on bringing the coordination. As a result, it cannot find the sufficient time to concentrate on performance analysis and strategic decision making process. This is the biggest problem faced by the companies in the non-ERP environment. Now let us take one more example. In order to increase the profitability of the company, Every department has to perform their daily functions in the most effective manner. You know, every department has to perform some functions daily. These functions have to be performed in a most effective manner. For that purpose, every department requires some information from the other departments. For example, if you take the production planning and control department, its main daily function is to prepare the production schedule. Production schedule means just to chalking out a plan when to start the production, in how much quantity the product has to be produced, by which date the production has to be completed. This is called production schedule. In order to prepare the production schedule, this production planning and control department requires some information from the sales department, that is the date of delivery required by the customer. Obviously, if you know the date of delivery required by the customer, accordingly you can schedule the production rate. Right? Here, the production planning department 
is depending on the sales department for the information purpose. Let us take one more example. You take the purchase department. Its main daily function is to procure the raw materials required in the production department. So every time the purchase department is depending on production department for the information regarding what are the raw materials required. Now, if you take finance and accounts department, you take accounts department, it has to account for all the expenses and the incomes which are taking place in every department daily. So the, fine act, the accounts department is depending on all other departments for the information purpose. Like that, every department is depending on other departments for the information purpose. Yeah. So in order to see that every department functions smoothly, we have to ensure that there is the uninterpreted flow of information among all the departments. But it is not there in the real time organizations. Because you may think that every department is computerized. Yes, every department is computerized. No doubt about it. But each department is using one software manufactured by different companies. For example, production planning and control department is using one software manufactured by A company. Sales department is using one software manufactured by B company. Production department is using one software manufactured by C company. Purchase department is using one software manufactured by D company and so on. So every department uses different softwares manufactured by different companies. In that case, these softwares cannot be integrated with each other. As a result, there is no the free flow of information among the departments. So every department has to wait for some time for getting the information from the other departments. As a result, the length of the production cycle is increased. What is the production cycle? The time taken from the point of procurement of materials till you realize the finished goods into cash resources by sales. This is called production cycle. Always the amount of the working capital required by the companies depends upon the length of the working capital, the length of the production cycle. If the length of the production cycle is more, you require more working capital. If you use the more working capital, you have to pay more interest to the bank. It is the burden on the profitability of the company. In that case, how can you maximize the profits? So this is another problem faced by the companies in the non-ERP environment. Now, let us take one more example. Today, the purchase department has purchased materials from a supplier. Along with the materials, supplier will send the purchase invoice. Then, that purchase invoice is entered in the purchase department by the purchase clerk. Then, the same invoice is to be sent to the accounts department wherein the purchase invoice has to be recorded in terms of values. Means in the accounts department, we have to post accounting entries. So here, one purchase invoice is recorded two times. Once in the purchase department, again in the finance and accounts department. This is called duplication of work. Same invoice is recorded two times in two departments, which is called duplication of work. Here, we are paying the salaries to the people in the purchase department and also to the people in the accounts department. But both the persons are performing the same work, which leads to wastage of money resources. So if you waste your money, how can we maximize the profits? Absolutely no. So this is one more problem. Another problem faced by the companies in the non-ERP environment. Let us take one more example. Here, the effectiveness of the organization depends upon the quality of the decisions taken by the management people. Always the management has to take right decisions in right time. For that purpose, they should be provided with the right information. Let us take one example. We have the general manager of finance. For a particular decision making purpose, he wants to know what is the total amount of purchases that have been done as on today. In that case, the purchase, department, the purchase department will give one figure and the finance and accounts department will give another figure because your purchase department is in Mumbai and accounts department is in Hyderabad. So each and every individual invoice received by the purchase department cannot be sent immediately to accounts department in Hyderabad. So the purchase department will bundle together some invoices and this bundle is sent to the accounts department in 
Hyderabad once in two days, once in three days. Then only they are accounted in the accounts department. This is called time lag. Because of the time lag, there is the difference of information given by the purchase department and the accounts department. Means the general manager finance is not provided with the right information. In that case, how can you take the effective decisions? Then how can the profits of the enterprise can be maximized? Absolutely no. Like that, there are many problems in the non-ERP environment. So how to eliminate these problems? In this particular context, the concept of ERP has been developed. As I said, every ERP is based on the integrated management of different departments in the enterprise. So how that integration is achieved? Here, for any ERP, we maintain one common database. Without a common database, there is no concept of ERP. Please remember. So common database or central database. So here, we are maintaining one common database in the organization. Then, this common database is given access to every department in the organization, subject to some restrictions regarding data access. Why we have to maintain the restrictions regarding the data access? Because here your main goal is to provide the information to every department to the extent it is required. And at the same time, we have to ensure the security of the data. That's why we have to maintain the data restrictions regarding the access. And one more thing is, once you start moving up in the organizational hierarchy, the extent of access given is also increased. Right? So, okay, let us assume we are meant in the common database and that is given access to every department. Now, let us see how the previously discussed problems are going to be eliminated. Here, here you take production planning and control department. This department requires the data of delivery required by the customer. So, how that information is readily made available? Whenever the salesperson accepts the order from a customer, he prepares one document, which is called sales order. The sales order contains the information like name of the customer, his address, his contact information, the product for which is giving the order, quantity, quality, price, and the date of delivery required by him. So all that information is contained in the sales order. Then that sales order is entered into common database by the salesperson. Then the person who is responsible to prepare the production schedule, he will be given access to that sales order. Then he can just log on into common database. He will identify the sales order. From the sales order, he can find out the date of delivery required by the customer. And accordingly, he will prepare the schedule. In that way, the information required by production planning department is readily made available. Wherever may be your sales department, wherever may be your production department. Now, let us take the case of purchase department. Whenever there is a requirement for any material in the production department, the production clerk or the production person or the supervisor will prepare one document which is called material requisition. That material requisition contains the details of the materials required and the quantity required. Then that is entered into common database. So here we have warehouse department. So that warehouse person will be given access to that sales or material requisition. So that warehouse person will just log on into common database. He will find out, he will identify the material requisition and from the material requisition, he will identify the quantity and the material required. And accordingly, he will issue the material to production. This is the case when the material is available in the warehouse. Suppose if the metal is not available in the warehouse, then the warehouse clerk will prepare one more document, which is called purchase requisition. 